since we're done talking about cable and streaming, I want to talk about my leak. Start it. Hey, I'm Howie Mandel. This is Howie Mandel Does Stuff. I'm Jacqueline Schultz, your daughter. And we started, uh, you can't tell because you're listening whenever you decided to listen or watch this, but we started a couple of minutes early because we had some breaking news and I said, we got to roll on this. Uh, Jackie, you just shared some information about your house <laughs> with me. What, what's going on? Wait till you hear this. Call, wait before she says it. Uh -huh. If you're listening to this alone, I would pull over. Uh, if you're listening to it in a car, um, I would call friends and family right now because uh, this was worth starting early. This is an extra. We do have a, a special guest today you're going to love. Uh, John Lovitz is coming in. John Lovitz is one of the funniest guys on Saturday Night Live. He was the liar guy. He's a great comedian. He's a good friend. Um, Lou's not even in the room yet. No, I know. <laughs> I know. He just said it's not 12 o'clock. That's when we – you just don't give away when we take – because people – um, I know we started early because we had some breaking news. Oh. Yeah, go ahead, Jackie. I actually have two things, one of which I did. And I can't wait to hear Jeremy, who is our editor. J Money. J Money. I just found out that he's got <laughs> this Money. whole following. He's J Money. And his parents I saw are them. in the house today. <laughs> really? Is that your parents? I know your mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> he's got a very pretty mom, and his dad looks like Cher with a beard. Yeah. <laughs> is that he got he sees his as a handsome guy who's got hair down to his uh his navel and uh i said he goes this is my dad see where i get my hair from <laughs> like like we've been wondering where does he get long hair <laughs> like he didn't grow it himself i my hair is not my my father but I, i'm i feel like i'm people are going howie what's the news what's going on yeah, what why did you start early go ahead jackie i told you i have two things Number one is before, I, thank you, before I got here, I noticed there was a leak under my sink. Okay, so let's stop and talk about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> this is, and, and for Jay Money, who uh, edits and sets up all the clickbait and the other thing, you could uh, also, th this, this episode, Beyond John Lovitz or anything, that's the breaking news. Yeah. Uh, my daughter took a link under, a uh, leak. Hold on, John Lovitz is calling me right now. Should we answer? Answer. Go ahead. Okay. Let's hear. Hello? Caroline, it's John Lovitz from Agua Caliente show. <laughs> Hi, John. No, but for those that don't know what he's talking hey, about. I'm on my way, but I'm on, I'm on the freeway. That's just like jam. Oh, it's okay. I'm almost on, on the, on the, I'm on the, vent. yeah, it's like that. It's okay. It's no, 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 it's okay. Uh, <laughs> Bring the phone in here. Oh, oh, hold on one second. Howie wants to talk to you. <laughs> we'll get back to the leak under the sink in just a minute. Is this more interesting than well, last a, week's topic no. about streaming Don't worry and about cable? It. So John no. Lovitz is our <laughs> no. guest today. John. John, can you hear me? John? Yes. Yes, uh, it's Howie here. And we're actually rolling on the podcast. This is the John Lovitz episode that you are on right now. We had to start early because we had some breaking news. My daughter have, has a link, uh, leak. leak under her sink. So what, why are you calling in rather than being here? Oh, this is the podcast now? Yep. <laughs> I can talk to you. The reason I'm calling in is because there's traffic on the freeway. Wow. Who would think in L.A., that there would be traffic on a freeway. Wow. Well, not like, so the, wait, not the two on, breaking pieces of news, <laughs> there's a, there's, tra wait, John, John, just because the listeners have to grasp all this information. <laughs> two amazing things have happened in this episode. Number one, my daughter got a leak under her sink. And two, John Lovitz just noticed that there might be traffic on the freeway in LA midday. Unbelievable. Go ahead, well, John. here comes a policeman. I think there was an accident that was unknown when I left to come to your podcast. I don't understand what you're saying. It's there was an accident so that was unknown? Nowhere. Where are you, John? Yes. I'm in Van Nuys. Where are you? I'm on, I'm on, I'm at the, see, so Paul, the, the Ventura Freeway going to Sacramento. Okay, he's so going to we, we are going to Sacramento. You realize that this is in this uh, your guest on a podcast in Van Nuys, California. Sacramento is what six hours away? 
I also know I think, that you live in the valley, yeah. right? I won't give your address or anything. So you no, live- I don't. But now there, see, there was there's a big accident. I just passed. Now the traffic is flowing. You realize you're like you're already five or ten minutes late. Yet you're still on the podcast. So then I'm not late. You are late. No, te- technically, how can I be not. late if I'm on the show? Exactly. So what do you want to talk about? The reason he said... Uh, Where is uh, your daughter? She's right here. I'm right here. Hi, John. Oh, you're there. I'm here. You yeah, everybody is Everyone there. is here. <laughs> everyone is here except for you. Except for you, our guest <laughs> for today. You are not here. I'm here despite the leak under my sink. And too. the traffic. And the traffic. I came on the <clears throat> same freeway well, that he's coming on. No, you, you came from a different direction. No. How do you... You don't know where I live. You don't live with your dad still? No. <laughs> Do you, John? <laughs> no, she's 37 years old. She's married with two kids. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the reason he mentioned Agua Caliente is because um, John and I played this past weekend together. We were on the road together. And we played at, at the casino. Must have been a beautiful hilarious. room of t- uh, thousands of people. And you were, John, it's the first time I saw you do stand up. You were amazing, buddy. Thank you. Is that you turning left now? I heard your signal. Right. I'm getting off the freeway at Sherman Way. Let him it go so that I'm he can five, get just five get here. minutes away. Yeah. You're five minutes away. Are, did, did you dress nice for this podcast? Oh, I'll say. No, because you said that you were getting ready. You called me. We had an 8 o'clock show. And I said, I'm going down for dinner now at 6 o'clock to get something to eat before the show. Come and join me for dinner. He goes, I just got up and I'm getting ready for the show. Yeah, I, I, I Wait. never walk through a show. I have a routine. So okay, I, well, I, apparently that was a, I you were at a court. I eat lunch. I take a nap. I, I sit on the toilet, listen to music, and go over my act. And Wait. then I shower, and then I get dressed. You don't shit or anything? You just sit on the toilet to listen to music and go over your act? Why don't you sit on a chair or a Oh, pillow? because you never know if something's going to expunge. My husband does that, too. <laughs> what, they just sit he on the toilet? He sits on the toilet, even when he doesn't have to go. Like, he you sits can on end the up... toilet all day. Wait, you can end up with No, I hemorrhoids. have to go. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. The point was well, that you were already up. I John. Howie. You were already up, and you said you're getting ready for the show. You didn't come down from 6 o'clock. Getting ready, it took you an hour and a half. And I said to you, what took you so long? And you said. I, was, I had to get dressed. You looked I don't okay. Remember what I said? It was, it was two days ago. You went. I have hair. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> that's what you said. That's what you said to me. <laughs> so, oh no! Ew, maybe you should ew. stay where you are. What is going <laughs> what on? What is that? What was that, John? <laughs> oh my God! Are you close now? I would make a U-turn. <sighs> Based on that sound, I would make a U-turn. Yo, you made me laugh, for God's sake, and a phlegm ball came up. A phlegm ball. A phlegm ball. (laughs) It says I'm 0.6 miles away. Let him go so that he can just get here and come in. Do you feel like this is slowing him down? I do. I think it's slowing (laughs) him down. I would talk. You cannot talk and... and, It's not slowing me down at all. No. All right. No. Keep going. But anyway, he was a joy to watch. The audience loved him. I would love to work with him more, mm-hmm. and we are developing a show together, and I'd love to work with him more. But it, even more than that, he's kind of he's got some interesting stories. Be, be before Saturday Night Live. Oh. Are we going to hear about them when he comes in? I, let me just tell you when he was working at your. If job, you ask me, I'm <laughs> not going to ask you. I want you just. <laughs> you sound like a girl that I wants to go to the prom. <laughs> Well, I don't know what stories you're referring to. Uh, it's 28 years of life before SNL. You were 28 when you got SNL? Yeah. Yeah. And then before you did SNL, you were an orderly in a hospital. Yes. I was an orderly. I worked at a clothing store. I was a messenger. 
All at one job. <laughs> All at one job. He worked at a clothing no, store for... for Say that again. I was a waiter for a minute. I was horrible. I got fired twice. Why'd you get fired for being a waiter? You know what I'm hoping? Uh, like, you'll get here and the interview will be over. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you everything while you're in the car, and I want you to get here so that we can say goodbye in person. That's a great idea. What? Go out front, I Rich. You, you don't, I don't see, see you. Me. <laughs> Well, I'm not standing in the street. Uh, this is. Well, why not? Uh, I sent somebody out. You can go hang up and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll bring you in. We're going to bring John Lovitz in. We're going to talk about uh, okay. some interesting things. Hang up, John. Is that better than the leak under my sink? No. <laughs> Streaming and cable. That is so Rob Drydick's son. Rob Drydick. It's Rob Deerdick. Deerdick. Yeah. Yeah. Rob Deerdick's son yeah. is a plumber, apparently. Uh -huh. well, he taught, taught him how to fix a toilet. Yeah, right. I so I think he's probably very well priced, very competitive. I should hire a five-year-old. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about. The thing you know, he does a a, a one-man show at the Tropicana. They they he does a, a seven o'clock show um, at the Laugh Factory Tropicana um, for like a month at a time. He'll be there. He was there the last time I was there. Very funny. You're welcome. So he's coming in, and uh, is it? I can tell by the way. I'm seeing my friend Danny. Danny Passman is here. He's a good buddy of mine. He's a he's a, a lawyer. Represents a lot of people that you probably know. And um, I see you looking. Do you see John? No. No, that's no. No. <laughs> no. He was at. I'm telling you, when he was in his car, he was maybe a hundred yards from here. There's no traffic jam between the parking lot and this room, and it has taken him like forever to get into this room. He has he hair. There. I think he is there. There he is. Yeah. Oh, Whoa. wait a minute. He looks so familiar. Uh, oh, there's a dog. He's got his dog. You know what his dog's name is? Uh-uh. He'll tell you. What's your dog's Have a name? How are you? Sit down. Here? But yeah, by the microphone, you can put a, a headset on if you want, but your hair is perfect. Oh, thanks, yeah. So is your jealousy. What? <laughs> <laughs> What's your dog's name? Uh, Jerry Bruckheimer the third. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's Jerry. Well, Bruckheimer. I, ha I had a cat, Jerry Bruckheimer, but he sadly passed away. He was twenty-two. Hey, Jerry, he was a wonderful cat. Yeah, he's more Jerry. He's my dog's always with me, and he's so been in movies. He's been on the Tonight Show. He has credits. <laughs> That dog. Yes. Now you're saying this is Jerry Bruckheimer the third. Right. The well, who's the first? Jerry Bruckheimer. And the second was the cat. The cat. And then the cat passed, and you named the dog the third. <laughs> He's a rescue dog, and he was he it was a rescue pet store, and his name was already Jerry. And he had an underbite, and he was just the cutest thing. And I picked him up. See, he knows when I talk about. Him. <laughs> <He> <laughs> but what, if he's at a pet store, why is that a rescue? It was, it was a pet rescue store. They only got dogs from, uh, uh, they, it was horrible. Producers. They go, high kill shelters. I said, what does that mean? They go, 50 a day. Mm. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's horrible. So they started a store where they would rescue these dogs. Well, you know what? I think that's a great. And look. What? Mm. Oh, my God. <laughs> so uh, for those that are just listening, he has a, uh, a pillow, which is just of, a, your face. of my face, which he just put on his crotch and made that sound. And that bothers me. Mm. Oh, my God. Don't do that. Would you be interested in, are you busy tonight? Oh. No, I wasn't. It had, it had no connection to what you were doing. But uh, oh. are you busy? Well, then, tonight? if it has no connection to what I was just doing, yes, I'm busy. If there's any connection whatsoever, I'm free as a bird. <laughs> as a butterfly. <clears throat> and so, so <laughs> no, because. Your daughter, she looks like she's 20. Thank she, you. You're 37? Yeah. She'll be 38 soon. Gosh. Not that soon. Yeah. She has <laughs> your skin. And by your skin on her face, I mean the skin well, Jeremy on top has of his your head. Jeremy has his father's hair. I'm talking about the skin on top of your head. Oh, she has the skin on top Jeremy. of your Jeremy is the editor. The first guy uh, he's producing the show. See the guy with the hat on uh, right there? He's looking at you and waving. Is that your husband? No, no that's Jeremy. But that's Jeremy's well, okay, father. I'm talking about her skin. Okay, go ahead. Well, who the hell's Jeremy? I'm just talking about people who have things that their parents have. He has his father's hair. 
she has her father's skin. On the and top who's, of head. whose head do you have? You want, you want to see her husband? You have an egg's head. There's her husband. That's her husband, my daughter's husband. That's my son-in-law right there. That's right. Alex right there. Look, this is uh, John Lovitz. Oh, we met. I know him. Really? Uh, when did you meet? Oh. Many times. Okay. Many times you've met her husband? <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, you probably do a trivia night with a bazooki cookie together. <sighs> Have you ever been to Zara's? <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> you, 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 I remember you said you have ADD of me. What? I've never been. No, I I, I've life. never been. I never. I had a bazooki cookie, but I never have been to Zara's. Do you like golf? <laughs> I do. I well, I used to, but I find that once you get to the windmill, it gets so tough. It really does. <laughs> yeah, it's timing. Well, but I can't get the cart around the the. Uh, the One without... time, I was on a date with a, 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 a girlfriend from high school, and uh, we're at the windmill, and, uh, and you date she, high school girls still. When I was in high school, oh, okay. and we were the same age, like seventeen, and and the it, it, the golf was, uh, she wasn't good at. It. She was frustrated. She goes, "Let's go in the windmill and have sex," and we did. <laughs> you ever been to Hawaii? <laughs> <laughs> did you have sex in a windmill at a at a? Pup nope, pup? I nope. Totally made that up. Oh, <laughs> you, you were. You wanted good stories, but they have to be true. No, you didn't say that. Yeah. You didn't specify that. Yeah. That's, is that how you came up with the liar character on SNL? Because you don't tell I, the story? Uh, the truth is, I came up, I, there was a, another girl, a friend of mine I liked, and I, and she said, I, I wanted to go out there. She's like, no, I like guys with a fat wallet. So I said, well, my dad had 15 oil wells just come in. She goes, yeah, right. I go, well, I am a pathological liar. And then I was in the Groundlings Theater, and we had to do characters. It was, <clears throat> And so um, the exercise called Panel. So there'd be a host and there'd be, and then like a, like a TV show host and six of us in chairs and they go, you have to come up with a character in the first two lines. So I said, I did the liar and I go, hello, my name is Tommy Flanagan. I'm a member of Pathological Liars Anonymous. Uh, in fact, I'm the president of that organization. And then <laughs> the audience would ask questions. So someone says, uh, how long have you been a, a how long have you been a liar? And I go, I don't know what you're talking about. And they said, you know, you said you're a pathological liar. And I'm like, no, I never said that. <laughs> so I thought that was funny, like I'm just denying. And then Robin Schiff, who was in The Groundlings, who wrote the movie Romy and Michelle and Siri, great writer, she was in The Groundlings. And she, came, she I, you know, came up to me, she goes, John, you set it up perfect just to answer in character. And I'm like, I did? She goes, yeah. And I, I didn't see it. She goes, she had to point it out. So she goes, right, I'll ask you a question. What's your favorite sport? I went, uh, uh, bowling. And it just became funny because you knew he was lying. And then I wrote a monologue of it and did it in the Growlings, got on the, and, and we got on The Tonight Show, and I did it, the first time I did it was on The Tonight Show. It's on YouTube. March 28th, 1985. Oh, throw that up. Happy anniversary. We'll watch it. That's today. So, uh, yeah, if you uh, see it. What's it under? It would oh, be, it is, it is today. Oh, my God. Is it today? What it, what it, what's the date? March what? 28th. It's not today. Today's the today, 22nd. Today's, today's the 22nd. Oh, I was going to go, that's weird. No, but the person listening to this right now, it's March 28th. The person listening to it, ooh, <laughs> what a big audience you have. I'm talking about next year. This won't be out by March 28th, but next year, there's probably one person listening to this. Are you today. saying this show isn't live? No. no. Well, then I wasn't late. Groundlings. You could have Ground waited till I got here. <laughs> Caroline, Caroline's looking late. for it on YouTube. You said I was late. I wasn't late in any way, shape, or form. I thought the show was live, and it's not. You could have just waited till I got here and started. We were going to wait till well, you got here, but then my you're just trying to cause trouble. We had such a nice time at Agua Caliente, and now this. We had to start early because my daughter sprung a leak. Uh, all right, that's between her and her gynecologist. <laughs> what is nothing private? There I am. Look, it's my son. Is that you? <clears throat> yeah, you'll think After it's like right. it looks now it looks like, oh, there's my son. Oh, you do look young in that. Wow. wow. No, that's Johnny Carson. No, I know, but the, when we see you. The truth, this oh. it is for you. <laughs> Hello, my name is Tommy Flanagan. And uh, I'm a member of Pathological Liars Anonymous. In fact, I'm, a, I'm the president of that organization. <laughs> yeah, that, 
that's who I am. I didn't always lie. No, I, I used to tell the truth. But uh, then one day I, I told a lie and I got away with it. Yeah. Told my parents I had a brother that they'd never met. They got mad at me for not telling them sooner. And they kicked me out of the house. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> so then I drifted for a while till I landed a job. Yeah. As a stockbroker <laughs> in India. And I was about to make an investment in a cow when all of a sudden a, a small Chinese man came up to me and before I knew it, he was clipping my nails. Yeah, that's what he was doing. <laughs> and I was about to pay him for a job well done when out of the sky fell a, a herd of albino chickens. <laughs> And they swooped down on us and, and gently sucked up all the air. And, and I blacked out. But when I came to, I was, I was in the middle of the ocean on a surfboard, surfing. Good, too. I, I was hanging a minimum of five at all times. And then if you could... That's hysterical. That's Thank on The you. Tonight Show? Yeah, they... Uh... With Johnny Jim, or Jim McCauley, you know, booked all the comedians. Like, I'm sure he found you, right? Yeah, no. Oh. But I tried to get him to, to find me, and he hated me, and he would never book me. And you know who booked me? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't no, know. you're bringing up bad, bad memories. Well, I didn't know. I Because I remember everybody. Uh, Not me. Well, it was Jay Leno and, and, and uh, J Jerry Seinfeld, first time in Roseanne and Bill Maher, all these people. And he came to the Groundlings. I didn't even know they were there. And on a Sunday, I get this message, 20 messages on my voicemail machine, which we had then, saying congratulations, congratulations, from the, everybody in the Groundlings, but which is a, but, you know, an improv group on Melrose, like Second City. But anyway. <clears throat> Did you get to that show on time? <laughs> yeah. I know. But, because there was probably an accident you knew about. No. no, it's because it counted. So then I get all these messages. I don't know what they're for. Everyone's congratulating me, not saying for what. So I called the theater next day, and Tom Maxwell, who was the artistic director from, I think, North Carolina, and big accent, he goes, I go, Tom, what's going on? Everyone's congratulating me for what? He goes, we're going on the Tonight Show. This is on a Monday. I go, when? He goes, I go, who? He goes, you going to do your liar pace and you and Tim Stack do the truck man driver and, and uh, Don Woodard and Kate Benton and Mindy Sterling going to do the white man's rap. I go, when? He goes, Thursday. I go, Thursday? And we're screaming. I couldn't believe it. I didn't even know they were there. And then on Thursday, I go, and I was really nervous because when I would do those first two lines, you know, member of Pathological Liars Anonymous, in fact, I'm a, I'm a, I'm the president of that organization. Half the time, the audience would laugh. Right. Half the time, they wouldn't. They didn't get it, right? Right. So I go, if they don't get that opening joke, it, the piece doesn't work. So I kept saying, Tom, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I was so nervous, you see. This, would, this was going to be my second time on television ever. My first time was on this uh, show, The Paper Chase, the second year when I was 25. Now, Howie Mandel... It's three years later, Howie Mendel's podcast. <laughs> three years later. So I go out on the set, and it, the Growlings is a 99-seat theater. The, 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 it's so small. Like, like the audience, from where I'm sitting in this couch to you is how far away the first person in the audience is. They're like 10 feet you gotta, away. you got to say right how there. long that is now I, a lot of people are listening. They don't know. Feet, three feet but away. But we're about three. 10 feet, I said. I You're said not 10 it. feet. We're not 10 feet away. Feet. We closer? Kind of yeah, yeah, we are a lot closer. <laughs> How many feet? Six? Well, as a single man, you should know I know length. it's your daughter. Oh, I was going to say, but I can hit her in the head with my private part. Anyway, oh <laughs> that's oh. how close we are. I'm uncomfortable. It's about six feet. So, uh, so If you, you did it in your ass. From here to her ear. Okay. So not that I would. Do you have a big penis? Oh, my God. I don't know. Is six feet in cold water big? I don't know. I don't know either. So anyway, so we're on. So, and then I go into this theater, the Tonight Show, and it look it's like 380 people. It goes straight up in the, it looks like it's gigantic. And I said to the director, where do I look? 
Because normally, you know, really? in a theater, you look. I'd never been on on the Tonight Show, and I see the audience. I, you know, I go, "Do you play the audience?" It's like a, like being in a theater, huge theater. He goes, "Just look, play it straight to camera." Let me tell you something. You watch comics on after that. A lot of them, and then, uh, you know, when Jay Leno's doing it, they don't. They never looked in the camera. They looked everywhere but in the camera. Right. Which is so stupid. Because stupid. most of the audience most is, comics on, are stupid. is, is that what watching you're it. Well, I don't know what they're telling him. Joe Coy, who used to open for, he's huge now. But he did it. I go, Joe, play to the camera. I go, there's millions of people watching you on that camera at home. There's 380 people there. He didn't look at it once. And I said, you idiot. <laughs> anyway, Joe, he goes, well, they said not to. That. I go, I don't care what they said. I'm, I'm telling you. They don't, they're wrong because it was a different director. You look into the, when you go on TV, if you're a comedian, you get a break, you play to the camera. That's where millions of people are looking. If you like look at it for a second, look away, you keep breaking your connection with the audience, which is at home. Most of the people in the audience are watching the monitors. You know what I mean? Right. You're on a podcast now. Where are you looking? (laughs) Well, I don't, where I'm looking at you. Oh, and the cameras are to the right. Genius. (laughs) They should be behind you over there. So I'm looking into the lens. We'll reset the cameras after I'm done. Actually, we did have someone come in here and reset. It was Bob, right? Bob Saget. Bob Saget came in here and reset the cameras and put it where you're telling Oh, okay. Thank you. God bless Bob. He knew what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you moved him back. <laughs> so it's just a profile shot. Yeah. Yeah. This oh, is- there's a camera there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my lord! And you've you've done way more television than me. God bless you. <laughs> so, anyway, this is the p- good part of the story. So he goes, play the camera. Oh, we've been waiting for so it. So then, <laughs> I know. So then, I, you asked me about the length of my private. Part. So then, and you I don't know how to play my daughter. So I'm a little thrown. Go ahead. Is she really your daughter? Yes. Oh, I didn't. Th- I thought Maury that, Povich isn't here. I so didn't we don't think know. it was. I thought it was a joke. Like it's not really your daughter. Why would you think that? Well, because she's so beautiful. They wouldn't think that you could produce. She has my skin <laughs> from the top of your head. What is this thing? Ew! She has the skin from your head. Okay. So anyway, what, it, Lou? what is this thing? It's a harness. It's a harness. What I'm is a- the reason for this harness? He's a uh, free. Uh, Jerry Bruckheimer the third just the jumped onto on Lou's lap and he doesn't know what the Anyway, harness. so I'm at the night show, so I don't know what to do. This is the good part of the story. Mm-hmm. So they go, it's like five thirty, they go to makeup, right? Or four thirty I don't know, whatever time it is. Does it matter? Yeah, because the show would shoot really early. I think it would shoot six thirty to seven thirty. Anyway, we go into the makeup room mm-hmm. and there is Morley Safer from 60 Minutes, mm-hmm. and he's interviewing Jack Lemon, the great actor. Right. He likes you. That's, wait, wait, wait. So he's interviewing- People listen to this and don't watch it. When you heard well, then him say- why are there he, cameras? Well, some people are my watching. My dog sat on Lou's lap. I said he likes you. So there's <laughs> Morley Safer interviewing what? Jack Lemon. He's saying it smells. You ever wash this dog? If you're smelling anything, it's you. It's you. <laughs> Go ahead. They're not getting along. Go so, ahead. so um, <laughs> what's on your hand, Lou? Jerry, the dog is. Jerry, come here. Why is the dog listening? Get, li- <laughs> get away from this. I don't know. I this man who was probably playing with his dogs. balls and he's licking Lou's balls through his hand. <laughs> so there's Morley Safer interviewing Jack Lemon, mm-hmm. and Morley Safer <laughs> says to Jack Lemon, "Oh, I'm and I'm in the makeup room. It's very small, and in my head I'm thinking, ooh, this is that world where all those." those people live in show business. It was like another planet to me. And he says, what have you learned in your 40 years as an actor? And Jack Lemon said, well, you know, there's one thing I've learned. It's, uh, uh, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Here's the answer to my question. And you saw the result. I looked in the camera. I kept it simple. And you, Howie Mandel, were mesmerized. <laughs> Wondering what... I was going to say next. Oh. Did you notice the pause? Yeah. Are you talking about with, on Jerry? Hang, just now? Oh, I thought you were talking hang. about Jerry Bruckheimer the third. Here's the key I to noticed life. The pause. They were on losing. No, lap. watch this. The key to life is time. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> but you wait for it. Yeah, but see how you 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 raised your head and was like, "What is it?" That's what William. And that's the key to William Shatner's acting style. Really? I think you need to know. Everything I'm going to tell you. 
Spock, Bones, I can't believe this is happening. So do you do, and you you use this skill even with your uh, arrival? Still? No, I just did it now for you. I don't. No, but I've noticed I noticed you were that. supposed to be here at twelve, but you got here at ten after twelve. Was that the pause? Was that a like a? So we were waiting with bated breath to see what would happen when you got here. Very passive aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> So but let's, you're also an actor. He is. Yes. I love By the it. way, this studio, you, you can't find it. It's in the middle of nothing. <laughs> if that guy hadn't been waiting outside, I probably would have passed it 30 times. Do you have, are you? Like the way you keep the address off the actual street inside the fence. No. 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 It's on the outside. I know. I was testing you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not, it's hard to see. Okay. So, John, I love you, and I think you're incredibly funny and incredibly uh, witty. Um, I'm fascinated by your life, you know. You are? I am. I, I am. I ask fr friends. What do you I, want to know, Howard? Um, are you dating right now? No. Caroline. <laughs> or your daughter. No, I'm no, married. She's, she's married. I'm married. You just said you met my husband a bunch of times. I know, but he said. Have you ever dated a married? I woman? know, but I don't want to cause trouble. But he said it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, can we get my husband back in here? Did he actually say it was okay? No. 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 Okay. Caroline. Oh, you know what? I thought he said it was okay. He might have said, "Oh, hey." <laughs> right. Are you dating right now? No. You've gone out with some beautiful women in your life. <laughs> Get my head off of your crotch. Um, you've gone out with a lot of beautiful women. Have you gone out? Have you well, dated? Excuse a, have you me for having good taste. Well, have you? Everyone gone out? used to make fun of me. You only like models. You don't like women that are really beautiful. I go. Well, doesn't everybody? <laughs> I'm the only guy that likes women that are beautiful. Have you dated? They're somebody? beautiful to me. Not you know. Not everyone's attracted to the women I I like, but most I you know I, most people are. I have a friend here that I talked to that he went to high school with you. And you probably dated some of the same women. Who? Jeff. Oh, Jeff's back. Look at Jeff. Jeff's making a reappearance. We were in the same class. Jeff only comes for Heidi Klum, Klum and John Lovitz. Wait, where is he? There he is. Go to the mic, Jeff. Go to this mic. That, that, that's not the same John Lovitz I know. Do you know him? No. John. What's There's your no, last John name? John Lovitz I knew in high school never got laid. He said he got laid. In the I didn't. He didn't say anything. What high school? He didn't say that. Oh, you don't know him? John. You don't know him? Jeff Paul? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Jeff Paul? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we went to elementary school together, and he looks totally different. We didn't go to high school. <laughs> he looks different he looks from different. elementary school? The man, the man looks different than you remember in elementary school. He did not get laid in elementary school, I'm telling you. Did you? No. Jeff? So nobody oh, I didn't recognize you. I haven't seen... No, Jeff and I were in fifth and sixth grade together, Wilbur and Tarzana and, and, you and think, Portola. Wait, wait. We right. didn't go to high school together. No, no so, wonder I'm like. But you think he looks different now than he did in elementary school? A little. Profile. No, Jeff, well, I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, he looked different. <laughs> so yeah. He was a lot smaller in, in fifth grade. And he didn't have gray hair. Did he have gray hair in fifth grade? No, black hair, jet black hair. I met him because you know where I met Jeff. And he had the car and Handy J. Handy J's. That's where I and met I him. And I ran in. Yeah, I ran in his brother Neil last time I was there. I was eating a sandwich. Nice. You're what? welcome. What a great story. You're welcome. <laughs> the one on on. Well, Jeff, nice to see you. Nice to see you, John. Where is Jeff here? <laughs> <laughs> He's my friend. He just hangs out. He was here when Heidi oh, Klum he was here it's too. Some like conspiracy. Oh, like a, like a. <laughs> did you know his brother Neil? I don't. When know Neil was nineteen, Neil was I know story. Brother. I know a Neil story. Neil was in Playgirl. I know that. He told me that, and he said that he's the bigger one. That Jeff said he's the bigger one. Bigger one, what? Taller. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Who is? Well, did, they're very did, nice guys. I've known them forever. No, I was just asking in school. Did you date? I didn't ask him anything. To be honest with you. I just know that you know him from school. Yeah, not high. Oh, sorry, oh, my phone's. Gone. I hear that you're, that's your manager. Yeah, hold It on, said hold Chuck Binder. Isn't that your manager? Get him on the phone. No, you don't. No. I don't want to talk to him? I think it's an alarm that he set. Was Could that I... an alarm? No, my phone rang. 
Can I uh, just... Uh, you know, make... your daughter's married, but she seems kind of into me. It's a little... <laughs> very awkward. I think that's like an ongoing theme on here because I read very the comments and everyone awkward. says that Who's I'm ringing? flirting with the guests. Yeah, you are. Am I? <laughs> well, you keep looking at me. Because you're talking. You're the guest. Well, I'll leave I, you where am I alone. supposed to look? You're the so king. So if you go to a baseball game, mm -hmm. everyone's talking. You just look at everybody? No, but okay. you are the only one talking. And you're the, where should I look then? You're the king of telling people where to look. Where should I look? Who's ringing? Well, I would think you would yeah. look at me because I'm the guest. But what? If, there's Lou, there's my dog, there's <laughs> Jerry, and then your husband's right there in the other room. Right in front of him. <laughs> my I really Lord. want to know because this is an ongoing trend with this podcast. I've been reading comments and everyone thinks that I'm flirting with the guests. Why are you flirting with the guests? I don't know. And why would you be flirting with my friends? I don't <laughs> yeah, what's that about? <laughs> That's uncomfortable. Father issues? I'll look straight ahead. Daddy issues. By the way, you know that movie Licorice Pizza? Uh -huh. Yeah. The opening scene they is shot at Portola Junior High where uh, – Jeff and I, I think Jeff went to Portola. We went there in seventh and eighth grade. Yeah, I love that movie. Well, the opening scene is where I went to junior high school. Right. Does that answer anything? <laughs> I didn't ask anything. There's a little glint in the 70s. But I saw that movie. That movie's supposed to be the valley in the 70s. Well, you know. They go, she li the girl lives in Encino. That Jackie, wasn't Jackie, Encino. Jackie, you're looking that at That wasn't her. Encino. That's like <laughs> Reseda or Van Nuys. Or, that, wasn't, that wasn't the part of the valley. That, that's why if you're not from the valley, that movie's accurate. If you're from the valley, you're like, where is this? The waterbed store was on Wait, Ventura on Boulevard. While you're talking, my daughter's looking at you. Why are you looking at I me? I put on my glasses, so, so I'm not actually looking at anyone anymore. I have my glasses on. I need to make a disclaimer. Is, she, I, I is your daughter to, blind? No. <laughs> I oh. need to make a disclaimer. Uh, I kept uh, promoting my show in Vegas at the Tropicana, March 28th through it's the 3rd. It's past that now. But, but it's important for the people to know that I'm not giving away, nor is the hotel giving away $82 billion. It's done. That's not going to yeah. happen. It didn't happen. Nobody's going to give that away. It didn't happen. I am it telling you that I will You're give two people a voucher. What? No, it's done. You're, the show's done. done. The date is done. Oh, okay. it this passed. This is aired past. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Go ahead, John. <laughs> Does does your wife know that your daughter's here? <laughs> what yeah. is going on? Yeah. I can call her. I'll call her. <laughs> I'll tell so her. I just wondered. No, I'm going to tell her. I'm going to call her because this is getting uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm going to call her. I'm well, I last time I saw your daughter was at um, the deli when you had your you just had a baby. Yes, I've had two now. Well, was that the first kid or the second? I don't know. I don't remember the last time. Hello, I was it? Terry. Yes. We're doing the podcast, and uh, John Lovitz is here. And, yes. And Jackie's flirting with him. <laughs> Jackie's flirting with him, okay. <laughs> no, now they should, John, that's Terry. You can talk to her if you want. Oh, so so your husband, he did say okay. I thought, I thought he may, maybe said, oh, hey. She just said it again. Your whole family's like, okay, okay. No, that's not what she, she said. Didn't she didn't mean like go. She like, just said, you just said, John, uh, your daughter's flirting with John, or I'm flirting with her, and your wife just goes, okay. All right. Well, I don't blame you. She is amazing and gorgeous and no. adorable. And she has and my smart, skin. And no, he's saying that I'm flirting. I have her skin. Oh, oh you're skin. I'm not Jackie, flirting with your you daughter. She's married. I know her husband. I respect that. She yeah. keeps looking at me. I don't know what to do. I'm so uncomfortable. Don't look at him. Close your eyes. I tried. I tried putting on glasses. To see him better. To, no. Okay, so no, turn she's doing your back an impression of a blind turn woman. Turn your back on him. Okay. <laughs> if you can't avoid it, I mean, I mean, he, I get it. He's so uh, hot that you can't help it. But if you can't avoid it, just turn your back. Done. Uh, by the way, your wife sounds like a genius. <laughs> okay, wow, honey. I like that. I'm going to be on the podcast more often. Yeah. All right. Bye, Are you Terry. having fun? Bye. Bye. Well, that happens. I'm the guest on the show, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Is your daughter even going to look at me? This is so <laughs> rude. She's she listens her to her mother. Me. <laughs> she listens to her mother. She does. Um, so what was I going to ask you? I talked about, I alluded to the fact, cause you had told me the story, you know, your father is a, uh, a well-known doctor in the San Fernando Valley area. In fact, he built 
the hospital where I had two of my children. You're welcome. Okay. And <laughs> in other words, is, was this child born no, at Cedars? No. Cedars. She's from Cedars. Oh. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, uh, and you were an orderly there, which was fascinating to me. John Lovitz as an orderly. Yeah, if you go to Tarzana Hospital. Now, I mean, it's, they've, I think another company bought it and it's yeah. built it up. It's a lot bigger than it was originally. But if you go into the lobby, you'll see my father's picture. Okay. But you Carol were an orderly. Lovitz. Wait. I was an orderly there when I was 19. And then after college, I got a job there. The first time I always go, my dad got me the job. The second time I went in on my own. I was very proud Wait, why did you lose it the first time? I was just there for the summer. I was in college. Right. So I went back and then to school. Went, but after college, yeah, my dad said, uh, he goes, just so you know, you're on your own. And I was like, okay, after college. But I graduated and I said to him, he didn't even bring it up. I said, I had to move back home. I go, listen, dad, I don't have any money. I know you said I'm on my own, but I don't have any money. I just graduated school. So I'll make you a deal. Because he would always say, growing up, he goes, if you, I'll make you a deal. Like, you, do this job and you want a bike and I'll match you and say, you know. So he always had me working, which Wait, was- you were a, playing let's make a deal with your well, parents? Well, no, it was a good thing. No, because he was teaching me how to work. So I right. could stand on my own two feet. It was good. So he goes, you're on your own. So I said, okay, well, I know you said I'm on my own, but uh, um, I'll make you a deal. I go, uh, just let me live at home for six months. I'll get a full-time job and then I'll save my money so that I can then have enough to move out and live, be on my own. So he, he liked, he goes, okay. So I worked at the hospital. I went back and got a job as an orderly. And the orderly in a hospital, I learned, is like, they're the least trained person. There's no training. They go, here's how you make a hospital bed. And you have to bring the patient water. You're on an eight-hour shift. And you have to take care of, like, say, seven or eight patients, making sure they're okay and you need to do anything water. You need your bed made. If they poop in the bed, you got to clean it. It's you got to clean people's poop? You can wipe their butts. Oh. No, you didn't. Yes. And I'm doing the cartoon, The Critic, and they go, well, is it better doing The Critic than, than being an orderly? I go, no. It's much better wiping people's butts than doing voiceovers. Of course it's better. So anyway. There's not much that isn't better. God. So, so. Did you know that you had to wipe people's butts when you took the job? No. How did you find out? <laughs> they go, you got to clean it up. And one, 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 it's horrible. One woman, this is, anyway, she was really sick, you know, and she couldn't control herself. So she went to the bathroom in her bed and it was like, it was like two, it was horrible. It was like two giant balls of chili. <laughs> so you had to get a towel, a big towel and scoop it up and put it in the trash can. In so the trash I, can? Yeah, I scooped it up. And it and I put it in the trash can and it was like sliding out of the trash can and I was started to throw up. Why didn't you put it in the? Oh my god! So I ran out throw. of the room and I'm gagging, you know, throw up. And there was a nurse, Cheryl, big. She's about huge. She's like six two, you know, 200, 300 pounds. I go, Cheryl, I, 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 I can't do it. I can't go back in. I'm gonna throw up. Just John, it's your job. Just take a deep breath and go back in. Wow, those are good words. And I was like, oh. Well, why would you clean the shit like two bowls of chili of shit? And why would you dump it in the waste paper basket? It was so much. It was a giant amount. <laughs> but isn't it too much I mean, it was, it was. I was 21. I'll never forget it. I can't get out of my head to I'm this sorry day. I so it was so much. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't just like wipe it. It was like a bowl of chili and the woman i was i felt bad for her but it was just but no oh my god so then you, and then it goes it is it better being a, doing the critic a voiceover than being an orderly no 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 it's much better wiping people's butts no but you didn't you didn't talk about that so now you clean the one bed. woman okay. had a stroke <laughs> okay you want to hear about this yeah <laughs> i'm just saying you're not a 22 year old not qualified you're with the patient to wipe an ass more than anybody they start thinking you're the doctor they get emotionally dependent no, on you nobody has a doctor wipe their ass no i'm telling you they started going dr john dr john they thought i was the doctor these women they're in their series. one woman was she had a stroke right mm -hmm. horrible anyway she's like in her 70s i'm like 22 and she's you're going fine. to the bathroom oh. no howie jesus so so I'm like waiting for her to push out a do, right? What do you so mean? So she can't 
do it because she has a stroke. So she's like this. <laughs> it was, I felt like, that. She's like I, I laughed over it. Go ahead. <laughs> she's like that pushing for like five minutes. And I'm Where waiting and I'm waiting Where and I'm getting you? hot. And I'm yelling at her, come on, push. <laughs> Go ahead. Will you push? And it's coming out like a millimeter at a time. Or poop. And I'm like, wait. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying I'm not. I wasn't good. I wasn't qualified. But you you blame yourself for her inability? <laughs> no, to- I, I'm saying I, I was a jerk for being impatient is what I'm saying. It's oh, like, do you, this is an apology. Yeah. I'm just like. You were anyway, yelling at her woman, push. Will you push? <laughs> so the, finally, <laughs> she didn't say a word for three weeks. So then they said to me, they're going to transfer her to a nursing home. So I go in her room I go, and I said, I go, listen, they're, they've, um, you're doing better. Anyway, they're going to transfer you. So you don't have to be in the hospital more. They're going to transfer you to a nursing home. So do you want your bed up or down? And I'll see, she goes, up. I was shocked. I go, okay. And well, I that's put the her first bed word. Up. In three weeks, nothing, up. And I ran out of the room. I go, the nurse, she spoke, she spoke. You know, the drama that goes on in a hospital. That's a great story. Is <laughs> That's the enough. drama, if they did a real a show these, you know, about hospitals, if they did what really happened, oh, they don't have to exaggerate have anything. To when it's, you in, it's life and death every day. It's insane. But you didn't deal and, with and life and look, death. Yes, I did. What do you mean you did? You were wiping chili bowls into the <laughs> trash. My dad had a patient on the floor. The guy and the next the guy was there and he's dying. Next day, I go into his room. I watched him die. Why? His, Why because didn't he you? was dying. There's nothing you could do. So mm. he's his breaths got fewer and fewer in between. Because I'm telling you what death is like. It's not what people think. So all of a sudden it's like he's breathing less and less. Then he breathes like every five seconds, then every ten, then every fifteen. And you yell, push every fifteen. Mm. And it got farther and farther apart. And then suddenly it just a Stop. minute would go by and then it just stopped. So it looked like he went to sleep. Mm -hmm. So I went to the nurse. I go, I think the guy in 408 died. Why didn't you call anybody let's before go that? <laughs> he, because he was dying. There was nothing you could do. Okay. So she went in. She was, she was, John, right? She checked. She goes, John, don't freak out. This happens. He's died. He's dead, you know. And the guy looked like he was sleeping. And then a minute later, it was like his soul. We've talked about this. It was like his soul left his body. He just looked dead. Like there was... He was gone. His body was there like a shell, but there was nothing there. Mm -hmm. So, but it was very peaceful. It wasn't what you, people think. It's like you just go to sleep, and and, and you know, I, I get it. But when you wipe somebody's <laughs> ass, you, you you talked about cleaning it out of the bed. You didn't actually wipe somebody's ass. Yes, you did. Yes. Do you find that? I'll tell you something worse. Okay. I don't know if it's please, worse. Okay. Please. There was a oh, woman in the hospital. <laughs> Welcome to lunchtime with love. You want these? <laughs> do you want these hospital stories? I love them. Yes. Okay. People there was them. a woman. She's very cute, little, about ninety, and I don't know, Grant. I anyway. don't. So, anyway, she'd be in her room, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not making this up. So she'd be screaming, Vaseline. Vaseline, Vaseline, please somebody, just a little Vaseline, Vaseline, screaming. So I'd run in her, I go, are you all right? She goes, little Vaseline. I go, what's wrong? She goes, my rectum is so sore, just a little Vaseline. My rectum is so sore, just a little Vaseline. So I, I'd have to put on a glove and put a little Vaseline. She goes, Thank you, thank you. I mean, it's sad. Wow. You know, it's not, and, but you're like a superhero. Right. So then, <laughs> here's the, that's not funny. The funny no, thing that's is not I funny. created a character mm -hmm. based on that woman, Biff Lorenzo, and I did it on SNL, and his lip was like, and he took like this, little Vaseline. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where characters come from. You never know. From a 90-year-old woman's ass. Your Vaseline. <laughs> wow. Well, we really, to be honest with you, people go where the characters come from, and we really legitimately got to the bottom of it. <laughs> yes. Yes, we did. So well, I was going to ask you, when you're wiping a patient's ass, 
if it's a female. You know what? I just want to say something. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was thinking, I hope he gets back to this. Okay. <laughs> when you're wiping a patient. Oh, I'll tell you another story. Okay. Oh, please. <laughs> and it has to do with the female butt. Okay. Oh. Is the female butt different than the male butt? I think the female. I don't butt know. I've never examined a male butt. Anyway, here's the thing. Okay. I'm on the surgery floor. Women would get hysterectomies. Okay. I'm an orderly. I'm 22. I don't need training. So they go, John, you have to give these women an enema because after a hysterectomy, <laughs> they fill up with gas. Okay. All right. So <laughs> you, this woman was like 37 whatever. So I go, all right, hi, how are you? I know you're there. I have to give you an enema. Hi, how okay. are you? Is the opening line to so an enema. You need, so I said, all right, now um, just you need to turn on your side, on your right side, and then lift your... Um, so now she's on her right side. So her left leg's up. I go, lift your left leg, your knee up to your chest. And then I have the thing. What is you, the thing? I don't know what the uh, thing is. A, a hot bo bottle water, a hot bottle, uh, you know, you know a pink Syringe. water bottle. No, a water bottle. Just <laughs> a bottle like, a little, you'll learn like Evian or? <laughs> no, like a, what do you put? A hot water bottle. You put a rubber thing. You, you fill it up with hot water and you, you know, you put it on your sore and you put it like on your. Like a hot compress or. No, a water <laughs> bottle, a hot water bottle. It's like, made out of rubber. A yeah, bottle water. Like a heating pad, like a heating pad. It's not a heating pad, a hot water I bottle. I don't know what that is. You with, fill with, it up with warm water. I Just listen. I'm listening, but I don't you know. Fill it. Out no. Of it. Yes, you fill it up with warm water, and there's a tube out of it, and you have to put the tube in their butt. And then the water goes in, and then the water comes back out and goes back and down the tube and pulls all the gas. Oh. So I say, lie on your side and lift your left leg up. So I've done this about four times. So I put in the tube and the woman goes, oh, wrong hole. Oh, oh no. It was in her vagina. Oh, God. So you don't know the difference between a vagina. She, and... No, I'm going to tell you the whole thing. So she, oh, I knew the difference. Thing. You do. She had what I define as a low slung vagina. <laughs> <laughs> her is that taintless? Her high slung. Her vagina was so, her vagina was where her butthole was supposed to be. Really? And you diagnosed this. You're, and you're only the orderly. Wrong hole. But the point is, when I put it, she goes wrong hole. And then, but we were both laughing. Both of you. Yes, yeah, she was laughing. She's about to get a hysterectomy. She She's got a hose and in I'm her like, vagina. Oh, Christ, sorry, I'm so sorry. I, I looked at her. I saw her butthole. And I just wrong hole. And I go, oh, it's higher up. You figured, how did she get all anyway, this shit the, in her the vagina? The point is, I wrote a song about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> go ahead. I wrote a hillbilly song. Go ahead. Called Oops Up the Butthole. Okay, go ahead. It's from the 20s. All right. Slamming it, cramming it, jamming it. One day I whipped out my dick and I started to stick it in quick. Her vagina was about as slick and oops up the butthole. My penis is thick as a ham around Yeehaw! her lips was some kind of jam. Uh, oh, you made me forget. You Don't yeehaw, Lou. Her lips with some kind of jam. Start it again. Yeah. Start it again from the is top. Is this what you thought when you decided to do a podcast with your daughter? Is this what you thought was going to happen? Now, here's a hillbilly song. These are medical uh -huh. stories. <laughs> this is an Based important podcast. Based on that, podcast. I wrote a song. Go ahead. It's a from the 20s, a hillbilly song called Oops at the Butthole. Okay. <clears throat> Slamming it, cramming it, jamming it. <laughs> One day I whipped out my dick and decided to stick it in quick. Her vagina was mighty slick and oops <coughs> up the butthole. My penis is thick as a ham and her vagina decided to cram. Around her lips was some kind of jam and oops up the butthole. Whenever I pull my pants down, my penis always ends up in her brown. Met a hot chick from Carolina. Decided to go in from behind her. She had a low slung vagina. And oops, up the butthole. Accidentally in the butthole. Surreptitiously in the butthole. I always accidentally, surreptitiously end up in the butthole. In the hole reserved for poo. Talk about the hole full of doo. Be round, yeah. Wow.
that's amazing. I wish I had a golden buzzer on this show because you would move right to the finals with that. I always say that you do better when you don't have original music, but you, your voice is angelic, and that was like, and it's based on a true story. No, I've been inspiring. working on my it's singing. Inspiring. A lot. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if you, I like the way you sang. You, I, I noticed you sang in the act. I loved your routine. We don't have to go into it now, unless you want to. But about WAP winning uh, the uh, yeah, yeah. Well, Grammy. come see my show <laughs> <laughs> with Howie Mandel. Yes, let's do more. <laughs> yeah, but you, that opening intro. I'm thinking, you know what? I'll come out. I don't care if they're warm. And then after that, you didn't like that. No, I liked it. It's better you come out after that, not me. <laughs> <laughs> so he's talking about I sometimes play this tape uh, Happy Days if you've ever been to any of my shows it's just that I fuck with the audience where there's this 10 minute they think the show's gonna start and I play this horrible tape over and over and over again until everybody's booing the sun is shining oh happy day no more trouble and no skies of gray ever since you said those words to me. And then we start the show. And I guess you hadn't seen it before, John. You went out after that? Yeah, after it. And I'm thinking, yeah, I think in the future, I, I really don't want to go. I just want to go out <laughs> and do my intro, do my show. But then I'll say, now, ladies and gentlemen, for your entertainment. <laughs> you didn't enjoy This it. is the man that inspired Howie Mandel to go into show business, his Uncle Nate. And then they play Please that horrible. Please enjoy. Show. Right. You didn't enjoy yourself? The audience was really warmed up. They laughed at your first utterance. No, yeah, but they would anyway. <laughs> <laughs> then I do. Sh I'm in Vegas at the Tropicana Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Check the dates. Anyway, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Well, not at, no, not every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but a lot at the Tropicana, the Laugh Factory, which I'm. Uh, I'm gonna be there. Grateful. No, you, no were, you were already you were there. Already, you were already there. You were, you were already, already there. For I God's know. and I saw sake. you. You were fantastic. Thank you. He is fantastic. I know. I appreciate that. Well, Are you there a lot? Uh, well, yeah, about two or three times a month, sometimes once a month. Mm. So anyway. <laughs> 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 so, so, so the, anyway, I just go out. I go, they go, here, John, I just go out by myself. I don't want, I don't need, I don't need to warm up the crowd. You see, I come out, I'm so <laughs> fucking hot. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I come out, they're boiling. And what time is the show? And then sometimes they're hot because they don't turn the air conditioning on and it's a uh, Vegas. And it's a desert. Ugh. And what time is the show? It's it's the best time to have a show in Vegas, <laughs> 7 o'clock. Because let me tell you. You do a 7 o'clock show? It's in Vegas. There's a lot of stuff going on at 7 o'clock in Las Vegas. It sounds early. Circus, circus. <laughs> there's a, a monkey from the Ed Sullivan show spinning plates. Right. And then there's a, me. A lot of competition. Okay, a lot. But it's a lot of competition. And then I go out, and the audience is like half full. Right. And I go, they tell me it's sell out, and I go, see all these empty seats. And I'm like, that fucking monkey <laughs> draws <laughs> the rest of my crowd. <laughs> fucking monkey. <laughs> all right, that's terrible. Do you get there right at 7? No, I, obviously, 7 o'clock, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's one of the worst times you could do a show. Good promo. promo. But, that's a good promo. But I, <laughs> but I don't have any competition except for the monkey. And and I um, enjoy it. And usually the people that come to the show, they've eaten dinner at four. <laughs> <laughs> You're really selling this. Oy. Oy. No, but it's a good show. And then, and then uh, you know, that's what they have available. And it's good practice for me. You know, that's why. That's, that's a big reason that I was good at your show because I get to do all these extra shows, you know. Yeah. So I've never do done so many Do you love stand-up? You started stand-up late in your career. Yeah, I always wanted to do it. I do love it because I get to write and perform my own material like I got to do on Saturday Night Live. So I do, I do love it. Yeah, and and it's like having the lead in a movie as opposed to, you know, I do a lot of these cameos in movies and I don't do them anymore. I don't enjoy it. It's like one day, two days. It's like I'm trying to do the whole show. So, so. Uh, you, you don't know, like doing movies? I do, but I, it's enough with the cameo. It's like, it's not fun because you got to like, it's it's not it's not a challenge. It's just It's just, you know. You, if you got a call today to go spend a day on a, a movie set, you'd say no? Yeah. Okay. Well, then I feel twice as honored that you didn't say no to us, that you're here. This is not a movie. It's just a podcast. No, but I, it's, I get that it's about me. <laughs> <laughs> the ego. No, but a cameo. It, okay. It's like, it's like uh, uh, you know, 
you're you're a, you're an athlete and you run the mile and they go can you run 10 feet and you're like well yeah i run a mile though that's what i do they go well just run 10 feet we'll pay you all right Is, so then you do but it's boring it's boring for me it, it I, I i feel incredibly lucky and grateful that I, that i'm still able to work at all that's wonderful Were so you i insurance? don't take any job for granted but it's just not fun it's just I'd rather do stand-up. I get to do a whole show. It's Is that better fulfilling. than wiping asses or giving uh, enemas into the wrong hole? Well, I would say what the is, critic was the most that? fun of voiceover. Then wiping it. a butt and then stand-up. Wow. In that order. Wow. Yes, it's better than wiping a butt. Do you think you'll ever get married? It's even better than wiping my own butt. Um, do you sometimes wipe the wrong hole? Please do not tell us that yes. story. <laughs> Oh, well, now I have to tell it because you said don't. Just sing us the so song. So one time, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I'm in the bathroom by myself, oh, listening to music. By yourself, are you? <laughs> by yourself. Taking a dump. Yeah. I'm finished. It's mm -hmm. time to cleanse. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm cleansing, and suddenly. I hear wrong hole. <laughs> I don't know who said it. And I go, well, I'm alone. It wasn't me, but I heard it wrong hole. Wow. <laughs> and I looked and it was indeed the wrong hole. <laughs> wow. Indeed. These are and like you, I thought, how many fucking holes do I have down That's there? Right. I don't know, but it was the wrong one. I love that. And I love that you shared it with and us. That's a true story. Do you think you'll ever get married? Mm. Do you want to get married? Well, sure, you know. And, but, you know, people go, why, do you have, why don't you have kids? I go, well, because uh, I'm a man. But now, you see, it used to be you need a woman to have children. But if you say that now, it's, it's wrong. You know, Dave Chappelle got in a lot of trouble for saying only women can have children. Uh, do you want children alone? Do you want to birth Do a child? I want child? him alone. You're going to have you to say, well, I thought only a woman can birth a child, but apparently it's changed. Right. No. no. Yes. <laughs> no. no. You know that's the wrong hole. No. Listen, there's a, 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 a transgender man in England and he gave birth to a child. Okay. All right. And I'm then not asking he said he wanted want... to be on the birth certificate listed as the father. Mm. And it went to court and the judge said, no, you can't be the father. Only women can have children. And the transgender man said, well, when a lot more men have babies, people will understand. <laughs> and I went, hmm. But you can so, adopt or, or have a surrogate and have children if you want So you children. don't want a wife, you want a child. What? What did I say? <laughs> what? She's staring. And would you like another grandchild, Howie? Oh my gosh. <laughs> She's looking at me like, I'll have your kid. That's you are married. All right, I'm well, done. Go in the other room and talk it over with your husband. You looked at me like, "Would you like to have a child?" It's the you first have, time I opened my mouth, like in she goes, thirty minutes, in this whole you interview. could have your. She looked at me and said, "You could have a surrogate," and her eyes went like this. <laughs> you could have a surrogate, and she went like this, Howie. I'm not kidding. Wow, did you do that? I guess yes. so. <laughs> what? This is uh, more awkward for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'm You're sorry. married. I know your husband. But I'm Howie, sorry, here's the question. Okay. Would you like another grandchild? <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yes. My yeah. brother also would like a child too. My uh, Alex is oh, here. My yeah. son is here. Your brother would like a child? Yeah, yes. you could talk to him about it. Well, do you want to be the surrogate for that? No, I do not. That's disgusting. <laughs> Alex, what kind of would you be family? interested in John Lovitz putting it into the wrong hole? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that. What? Can you get pregnant? No. Oh, then I'm not interested. <laughs> I don't understand no, where but, this is going. <laughs> but you don't want a wife. You just want kids. Well, yeah, I'd like a wife. But, but, you know, it's like it's like saying, you know, you have to find someone that like like likes you back. Yeah, that's always the rule. <laughs> have you just, ever been? You have go, you ever been? Clo you, you've gone out with a wife. lot of people in in your years. Have you ever been close to getting married? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But I've had girlfriends for a long time. The last. But one. I don't talk about my private life, Howie. Except you know why? Your why? ass wiping. Because it's private. 
<laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. I've never heard that concept before. You don't want to talk about your private life at all? No, I don't talk about it. It's private. Okay. Because it involves other people, you see. So now you're exposing their private life. You just talked about jamming a hose into a, a, a woman. Another person. That was my life. <laughs> and that was, that was her 40 hole. years ago. Oh. More. Right. 43 years ago. Right. It's not too soon. And I didn't say the woman's name. I don't remember her name. She's not, she might, if she hears this, she might go, oh my God, that was me. Right. <laughs> but you talked about Cheryl. Who? Cheryl, the 300 pound nurse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was 43 years ago. But you gave her weight. I mean, honestly, <laughs> you gave her weight. I think she's still alive. What? Wait, she, Cheryl's probably dead. Uh, well, you think Cheryl died? I, you she can't so, live that long. She was that so fat life. that that she died. Is that or what she you're saying? She lost it. I didn't say her last name. Oh. Is she calling you? I don't know. Rich is saying something. <laughs> Actually, I got a message here. Oh, um, he's saying ask her. Ask Cheryl. Her. It might have been Sharon. I said the wrong name. Well, can I talk a little bit about? Did this just go out? No, can I you can, hear me? I can hear you. My mic doesn't work. Anyway, um, what I was saying was uh, Lisa Kudrow is very close to you. That's like sister. Yes. And you, you, you. Well, I can talk about Lisa. Lisa is in the business <laughs> and we know her from friends because of you, I think. Yes. Well, At what the happened the story? was, <laughs> what happened was, uh, no, I, we, um, I lived in Encino and then we moved to Tarzana. Wow. See, when I was in fifth grade and that's when I met Jeff Paul and he knows David Kudrow who was in our class, Lisa's older brother. And David and I became very good friends. And um, Jeff, you know, and there was uh, Kevin Brooks and Bernie Chase. Jeff knows all these people. You know, yeah, but nobody school. listening does. So you, if you want to name the whole Kevin class. was a big <laughs> DJ up in Santa Barbara. Anyway, so 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 David was, um, we, we, I met him in fifth grade and then we became friends in sixth grade, like best friends. So I remember he brought me to his house you, and he kept saying, you have to meet my little sister, Lisa. And I was 11 and Lisa was uh, five. Mm. And I remember going to his house and he goes, Lisa, and he goes, she speaks Spanish too. And, and, and she was sitting in a <laughs> tiny little chair watching TV. She was my sister, uh, Lisa, Lisa, he goes, this is my friend, John, say hi. And she turned and she goes, hello. Hola. And she was so cute. She looked like a miniature of David. She was the cutest little thing. And, um, so I, and I would spend all, all my life, you know, at, at their house. So his parents became like my parents and his sis, older sister, uh, Helene and Lisa. This is, we, we were 12. We all, both had all, just sisters. So we go, we'll be brothers. We really wanted brothers. So they're my family, you know, that I grew up with them. So anyway, I was in college. Um, I was 20 and I came home and Lisa was uh, 14 at the time. And she was, I was a drama major at UC Irvine. And she said, oh, um, you're studying acting. What's that like? So I would talk to her about it. And I never really talked to her much because she was so much younger. And she, like, you know, they're kids. She'd be in David's room and David would go, get out. You know, they'd fight. <laughs> right. And I would it's talk right. to her about it. She asked me questions. I said, David, you know, your sister Lisa is really fun to talk to. She's really smart. And I knew her, but we never talked about it. And then I got her a book called uh, Audition by Michael Shirtleff and I, to Lisa. And I said, to my fellow thespian, you know, good luck in your acting. And then um, when I got... I was on Saturday Night Live. I got it in 85 and Lisa was in New York. And now she's like about 22 or 23. She goes, oh, I do some characters. I visit her and she did it. And then one day she, she called me. She said, hey, listen, I want to, um, I want to go into acting. What should I do? So I said to her, go to the Groundlings Theater. That's like I learned the most there. And, so, and I go, if anyone gives you a hard time, let me know. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll you you're, know, fucking knock them out. You really, so you've sister. always been violent. So, so, well, anyway, well, they were weird people there and there were some nuts. And I said, if anyone gives you a hard time, let me know. So anyway, but after that, she did it, you know, she really did it on her own. And then sometimes she called me about three times. She'd ask me for advice on something in acting. She goes, what do you think? I go, well, I think you should do this. She goes, oh, well, I was thinking maybe I would do this and then this. And every, every time she told me what she wanted to do and I'd say, now, you know what? You're right. That's better. Do that. That's smarter. Every time. And anyway, and then, you know, she ended up teaching there and, and she got, um, she, she, she did it on her own though. She got cast on, um, was it Matt Fraser, oh, yeah. Fraser. And then they recast her and then she got friends, you know, and she was on uh, mad about you, yeah. but she did it on her own. It took her like 10 years. And She's she does great. good. Are you still close to her now? Yeah. 
So my sister. And then and then when when um I'd watch her on friend zone, I said, and I knew her sister, a lot of what she did, I go, I knew I knew because I go up with their family, she's imitating her older sister Helene a lot. Oh really? And I said, I go, I want you, you're doing Helene. She goes, Don't tell anyone, John. She got me. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I knew because I, you know, I their family. I go. That's, and she told you not Helene. to tell anyone. Yeah, I go. That's Helene. She's doing. Was that private? Was that private information? Not now the show's over. Who gives a crap? <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of her humor was imitating Helene. Um, but both of us talked about David and uh, David, who's a. Uh, if you need a neurologist, he's fantastic. David's really, really funny, and a lot, both of us, you know. We're influenced by him. You know, you're with your best friend and you start talking like him and doing stuff and and um He never went. And we said we no, Lisa and I both said David could do this. He would do voice any accent, any voice, very funny, but he didn't want to do it. He's a neurologist. You're amazing. You're funny. And you are uh, a good guy and a good well, friend. I'm not going to argue. I'm not asking you to. <laughs> Thank you. Did for you have those a good compliments. time? Did you have a good is there anything you want to plug? Besides the seven o'clock show <laughs> at, the be, at the Tropicana, at the, the Tropicana, Laugh at the Laugh Factory, Check better the than website. the monkey, <laughs> better than the monkey. Me, that or a monkey, a six-year-old monkey from the Ed Sullivan Show spinning plates. <laughs> Anything else? Look for us in the future. I'm going to do a project uh, I have with a large him. Large penis. We did. I'm don't, at the Tropicana. Now he's talking to my daughter again, so I'm going to. I'm end not. This I'm talking to you. Okay. Anyway, this Why was, is every time I mention it though, she's making these googly eyes at all right. me. I have to go pick up Just my kids. Settle down. <laughs> settle down, dear. Do you want to wrap this up, Jackie? Yeah. You want to tell what do you tell the audience? Jackie. Yeah. You didn't know her name until now? No. <laughs> <laughs> we knew Jerry. I, I really thought it was something else. <laughs> Did you really? I didn't want to say it. I was gonna go Louise. Do Laura. I look like Louise or Laura? Jackie. Yeah, name's Jackie. Yeah. This is Jackie, by the way. <laughs> nice to meet you. You weren't here at the beginning of the show where we said, this is Howie Mandel stuff. I'm Howie Mandel. And she said. I'm Jacqueline, his daughter. You know what her full name is. It's Jacqueline Schultz. That's Lou Dinos. Oh, you weren't here for the beginning. It's not Jacqueline Mandel. No, I'm Mary. She's married. I'm Mary. Oh. I thought you knew Alex Schultz. You said you knew him. I, I've met him many times. I didn't know. I you don't know his I name either. I don't think either. they've met. No, yes, we have met a lot. Okay, all right, anyways. Where, where would you have met her husband? <laughs> With you, at the deli. I met him at, at, the, at the deli. Yeah, you're right. Love you. you know the I, first I time him. she met you? I know when she met you. She was Malibu. a baby in Malibu. In Malibu. And you washed ashore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember I had that boat and I crashed and you... Yeah, you, yeah, you almost died. Yeah. You know, we've saved your life twice now as a family. You were, you were in a dinghy and you got washed ashore <laughs> on our beach. And we took you in and we have to drive you home yeah, with your dinghy. And then the elevator. And then the elevator. Well, Why don't you elevator? tell that story? You it could just tell happened it. this weekend. Well, we're on the elevator on a on like a tram, a six seat tram going to the venue from the hotel. And uh, they on take a six us seat back. Tram. We're in a golf kitchen. cart. We're in a golf a cart. A six seat golf cart. <laughs> it's like a tram. Anyway, we're going along <laughs> and we're going to the elevator and we go up. And then I'm talking to Howie, and it stopped for so long, and I started to get off, and now he goes, "No," we're... and and uh, the tram was moving. I almost the golf cart was moving, and he left. Why? Why because did he... you decide to get off? I was bored because <laughs> he was talking waited to me long enough. He was All talking right. to me anyway. Um, you know, I say I always say about you, John, better late than never, and you were better late than never. That's Having... why I was late. <laughs> better than never. Better late <laughs> than never. Not show up or show up late and be better than if I'd been on time. <laughs> better late. I'm better late. Than never. He's anyway. leaving out the never. He's, He's just leaving better out. late. I'm at Don't it. need the then never. Better late. Never use it. You know the, the podcast is over. How did you feel about it? Oh, shit. Did you have a good time? <laughs> did you have a good time? John, did you have a good time? Yeah, what's that music? That's the ending. I'm still talking. No, you're not.